and thank you once again for coming to The Skeptic Psychic. I am, of course, your host, Richard Gregg, and with me always and for, hopefully forever, you know, not worried about my wife or anything like that, but my wonderful, intelligent, smart, funny, and, and very, very friendly uh, favorite sister slash sibling, Kimber Rodriguez. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? Doing fine. So, uh, what's been going on in your life? Oh, not much. Just work. Um, the usual. Been pretty busy at work. Yesterday was our father's birthday, so that was kind of a, an emotional day. Yes, and it's, it's always a celebration of uh, 45 years of saying he's 27, so... Yes, from the day my dad was 27 until the day he died, he swore he was 27 at, what was he, 58? 58 years old. He would have been 72 this year, which is the reverse of 27. <laughs> Oddly enough, that is true. Yes. <laughs> Not much on my end over here. Uh, got, uh, got a report from the doctor saying that uh, I may have, uh, within the next couple of years, get a hearing aid. So when if I occasionally go, huh, you'll know why. Oh, goodness. We'll just have to... Um... We'll figure that out at the time. All right. And uh, we do have somebody to inter uh, interview today, do we not? Yes. Um, today we have Lindsay Jewell with us. And um, she is a survivor of two near-death experiences and has had a spiritual awakening. So we want to go ahead and welcome Lindsay to the show this evening. Hi, how are you doing? Ironically, my birthday was just the other day on the 28th, so. <laughs> oh, well, happy birthday. Well, yeah, thank you. So everybody's a Libra here, it seems like. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Lindsay? Okay, well, um, so I was born in Miami, Arizona, which was, <laughs> if you're familiar with Travis Walton, it was an hour away from where all his experiences happened which is uh, always weird to me. Yeah, a friend of mine um, from high school played his buddy in the movie. Oh, really? Yes. So I feel like that was strange to begin with, but no. <laughs> um, so I've only done like just, you know, one podcast and um, I feel like it was pretty on the spot. So um, my experiences have... Um, I feel like I've always been connected with something since um, I was little. And this time I came along with some notes that so kind of helps this process. But when I was about nine, we lived in California. And I remember uh, this kind of paralysis state and seeing these three beings in the room, which scared the crap out of me. So I, you know, I, just thought it was kind of like a nightmare, child nightmare. And who really knows, you know? Um, so I was kind of with their gothic crowd throughout my high school years. That's kind of where I felt like I fit in. I was um, pretty introverted, was into the rock and roll and stuff like that. Um, I just turned 40, I'd like to know. <laughs> so my experience uh, really... I had a, a, a long list of traumas, and um, I can tell you from a nice life of just some unfortunate experiences, you know, I was very in a dark mindset for most of my life, and a lot of depression, and um, just really couldn't see the positive in anything. In 2015, actually, I'm sorry, 2014, um, and I say the word traumatic event because I just don't want people... I don't know, re-traumatize or biased by what happened to me, but I did jump out of a moving vehicle after um, something, like I said, I don't know the kind of viewers that listen to you, and I don't want to deter anybody. I had something really horrible happen, and I ended up trying to um, kind of exit this place, if that makes sense. I jumped out of a moving vehicle and ended up hitting pavement and losing consciousness, um, and then was taken into the ER and um, 
I didn't even know what happened. It was really bizarre. But um, about a year later, after I think the, the head started healing, I just kind of experienced some really bizarre um, things. Um, and let me, let me back up. At the end of – no, so this was the end of 2015. I'm sorry. Um, it was really odd. Something kept – telling me to wake up it was like signs were saying to wake up it was um it it just felt weird so this is yeah about a year well almost a year to the day of my head injury and um I had like a dream playing out that was I guess like a deja vu like a dream I had years ago that made no sense like had no point no sense and it was literally playing out in front of me And, um, so just had some strange things. I felt like I was at the right place, right time, right moment. So we're going to move on to like 2016, ran into a lady who said she was a medium, right? And she said, uh, oh girl, the devil's been trying to kill you for a long time and say this, the Holy Spirit, like the blood of Christ or something. And I grew up Catholic and, um, yeah, I know what the Holy Spirit is, um, that's not my belief system, by all means. Um, and I did feel something like warm and hot go through me. That's what was weird. It felt like in this so moment, weird things like that started months, um, um, that everything came to life, if that makes any sense. It was like I was opening books, and it's like they were talk, uh, talking to me. It sounds absolutely crazy. Um and this is already hard enough to talk to talk about with like the stigma of how ridiculous it sounds. Um, but all of a sudden, I was able to forgive, you know, people that have harmed me in my life, and I was able to see things differently. Like colors were more vivid. Um, the colors that I used to not like, I liked. And I guess there's some medical terminology for this one, which is, um, and I looked it up before, <laughs> before I talked to you guys, called acquired savant syndrome. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this. This is where people that have had strokes or head injuries, and then they gain some kind of ability. And um, they don't know why. And I think, like, I don't know, it resets something in the brain. It hits something in the brain that changes people. Um now, I was kind of already into music and artistic and stuff like that, so those were not, like, the abilities that, you know, I got more of. But, um, you know, as I was younger, um, and I just heard you talk about your, your, I think, father's passing, and I apologize about that. When my grandma passed away, she, uh, we were at her funeral, and or the day before I'm sorry her actual funeral and I was in this like paralysis state and I hear heard her as clear as day say like I love you Lindsay and then get on the bed to where my mom was at in this um in our it's like a we call it like RV like RV kind of thing and um I told my mom this the next morning she like dropped her coffee cup saying I know she was with me she was right there on the bed with me and um because I thought I was like losing my mind but like when my grandma passed, every one of the siblings experienced something. So something reset in my brain, and and I truly believe that something was guiding me to help me heal. I felt the presence of other things. I saw, and I lived in Colorado Springs at the time. I did see some very um, extraterrestrial type stuff. And this is, sorry, 2016 now, when this stuff kind of happened. Something took off from there. And, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like something was with me, something was with me and I felt the presence of it and it's still with me today. Um, you know, so whatever came into my life, whether that be extraterrestrials or angels or, or whatever, it helped me. It has shifted me and it's helped me now. Um, I thought like I was here from of, of depression and, and stuff like that um, because the presence of this entity is very powerful and like everybody has a different label for it. 
I like to put it this way. Don't worry about what my belief system is. Use it like Mad Libs, whatever you want to fill in the blank with. If you want to use God, Buddha, Krishna, go do it. It doesn't matter what I label anything. I just say the universe, okay? And if you don't like that, then I don't know. Fill in the blank, okay? <laughs> right. I totally agree, uh, agree with you. You know, I, I like to prefer to use uh, Heavenly Father is uh, how I like to view this uh, large entity in the uh, that controls our destiny. Yes. And God is the easiest term and that I could you know, people use source. I just, I, I try to make it as non-biased for that one person to hear the wrong word and not listen to really the moral of the story. That's all, you know, because right. I believe in, I believe in everything. Mm -hmm. And um, so after going through that, I guess, spiritual awakening, what baffled me is a lot of people started experiencing these supposed spiritual awakenings during this time frame. So that's what trips me out. And they talk about activations. Now, growing up in the Bible world, um, I didn't know anything about activations or spiritual awakenings or chakras or anything like that. Okay. That's not, was not taught to me, but what I experienced had everything to do with this. And when I went through this, like I said, I already felt like I lost my mind enough. And I was like, where do I go? Who can help me with what I have experienced and I did I tried to go to the church and those were the first one to say the devil comes in the, the devil mm -hmm. comes as an angel of light and I was like so you've just, just discredited everything that I'm telling you well you could also I've uh, actually heard this from a, uh, a, a preacher friend of mine even the devil knows the bible yes mm -hmm. I, I mean I, I don't know if that's the the devil that helped me heal, then I don't, I mean, I don't want to say that though. I don't right. want to say it. Right. But, but, but this was a positive experience in my life, <laughs> you know? Right. So um, it was like the world was new to me. Like the sky looked different. Everything looked different. Everything was beautiful. Like I was miss annoying positive. Like the person like that you just were like, she is, we love her. She's so positive all the time. Like we want somebody not, po and that wasn't me that was not me for the longest time. And so um, that very powerful experience, like I said, it was at the end of 2015 and through the beginning of 2016, like up into July of 2016, where I, I was really visually and um, um, the other word like you know hearing hearing things <laughs> hearing messages seeing things um so I mean I was so intrigued and I still am to this day I still am this is like a, 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 something I'll never forget every day I wake up I remember each moment and I haven't even told you everything that I've experienced um <laughs> but well, because there's just there's there's a lot. And and honestly, like, you know, I have the greatest mother. Um, I think she still has some of her Catholic beliefs um, and trying to tell your family members. A lot of people who've gone through these have lost family members because they're like, uh, they've lost it. They've lost mm -hmm. contact with family members, uh, children, you know, people that have had near death experience. It's sad because right. people aren't ready to hear it. And it does. It, it sounds weird <laughs> I'm not gonna lie but <laughs> so um you know my life was going really well um I you know had gotten married to this time to somebody I really believe this is the first time I felt what I feel like the spirit was inside of me like I felt like this was really honestly my soulmate come to find out I've thought everybody was the one <laughs> but <laughs> so um so January of, uh, of this year, um, I ended up moving from Colorado Springs into Nebraska. Why? Just was tired. Colorado Springs has gotten pretty bad. So, um, and had a husband and I have a, a, a toddler also. So um, my marriage did not end up going well at all. Um, and uh after six years, it 
love is like a drug. <laughs> love mm-hmm. is definitely like a drug. This is why you lose weight after you, you, you get out of it. You're withdrawing off of it, you know? Right. Um, this one uh, really did some damage. Um, it shattered me. It's crazy that even after a powerful spiritual awakening, you think you're cured. You think you won't have any more lessons to learn. You think that everything's going to be peachy king and you're going to be this guru now for life. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, there's uh, probably endless lessons. Hopefully, I don't have too many more of them. But um, well, my my grandfather uh, always said the fact of uh, the day you stop learning is the day you die. So (laughs) let's pray to God. Everything. I mean, he was 77 years old when he died and he just got to the end of his life. He's like, well, I think I know everything and it's time for me to move on. (laughs) Life definitely is a learning experience. And if you don't learn it, I I promise you, you repeat it until Mm -hmm. you do. Yes. I will tell you that um, my last marriage was the same plot line, different character. Except this one was a little bit worse. I, I, I mean, I'm for real. And so I do, one thing I do believe is patterns and breaking patterns. Definitely. And, I, ha- uh, I actually moved from South Texas all the way up to, uh, I am in uh, Washington state right now. And my, uh, I'm remarried, I'm second marriage. And uh, the wife and I have decided we're going to move down to Roswell, New Mexico to help out her awesome. family. Awesome. So awesome. We've been married for 10 years as of the 24th of this month. Oh, good for you. One day, yeah, hopefully so. I have that story, but it's, it's all right for now. <laughs> yeah. It's um, basically breaking the pattern. Like you said, you know, no, you're always you, going to be learning things. You do. So. You, I, I really believe that. Um, and um, so you know, a little, a little background on me. I, I do have a bachelor's degree. Um, life didn't come with the white picket fence. Like I said, like life promised you. Um, I joined the military, you know, so I did some things. But when I got out of the military, you know, um, I think a lot of ex-military. You were um, hmm? uh, ex-military as well. You're completely lost the moment you walk out that gate the last time. <laughs> I, I was stationed in El, to the vets, man. Texas. I was stationed in El Paso, Texas. So I spent two years on the island of Guam, and I spent two years uh, up in upstate uh, Washington, over on the Seattle side. Oh wow, wow! So well, one thing I, kn- we- I know the military life. Yes. So a, a lot of people and, and, and trust me, cause I'm highly involved with the VA and I've been to some of their PTSD programs and stuff. Um, a lot of them end up having substance abuse problems. Um, they get lost after that. There's boredom. Um, so, um, you just fall off the path because all of a sudden you're out of that uniform and you're kind of, um, not the, uh, a hero or, or, or something special anymore. People give you yeah. a 10% discount and send you on your way, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, You're always um, like, what's now? <laughs> yeah, it is. A, it's, and I joined at 28. I joined after I had, you know, had college behind me, but um, it's really crazy how it conditions you. And um, so, um, so January of this year, um, you know, I, I had thought, like I said, that I had learned all my lessons. I thought like that everything was going to be fine in my life. And, um, this marriage really took me for, it was like an ID special (laughs) ID channel special, like Mm -hmm. marrying somebody and finding out years later that they are not who they thought they were. And when you look back, you could kind of see it all like the patterns, like I said, patterns, but, um, I do believe that I am highly an empath. Um, Also being a Libra, okay, I am able to see every perspective. I'm able to negotiate and understand and am willing to work with you, especially when it comes to love. Right. Work this out, you know. Um, And that's when people get trapped in in, in some very unhealthy situations. And um, a lot of those toxic relationships do lead to people wanting to take their life. It, It really drains them, empties them. 
So um, at this time, um, I had about a year and a half sober before this time and then with this marriage. And now that I come to find out that relationships were also another problem for me. And this is where addiction resurfaced for me because I'd get into these relationships and then, you know, either they had a substance problem prior, it didn't matter, it resurfaced. And then it was out of control. And then there you are numbing it away again. But um, so, um, no, I, I'm, a, I'm an ex-heroin addict. Um, people always assume that you, you inject it. Um, most people do. I, I didn't because I, I don't really care for needles. So that was my luck that, you know, I'm very lucky for that. But at this moment in time, <laughs> um, and I had told my now ex-husband um, that I didn't, I was done here. And I don't say those things because I want him to come rescue me. I, I was done here. Mm -hmm. and um he was an IV user and um he uh told him to give me a a syringe and I fooled that sucker full of of heroin and um I knew that would do a pretty good number because that stuff is laced with all sorts of stuff anymore anyway so um so when I did that um so I was in, I remember being in the bathroom and I did that and I'm still angry about him, you know, but you know, he didn't care, but um, I remember doing that. And I, 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 I do that feeling. They say when I knew where I was going, I was home. I, that's, I knew it. That's exactly what I knew. I knew mm -hmm. I was going home and in a split second, I am somewhere else. I am still my personality. And um, that's what's crazy. That's what's crazy is like, you think like you're going to be something else when you get to that other side, but no, you still have all that personality. It's intriguing. Now my body, as far as my body, like I wasn't obviously a solid form, but it was like, I don't know if you've ever seen what dreams may come. It's an older movie with Robin Williams. Yes. You know? I've seen that okay. one. Yes. The, Never the have. Forms when he's up in heaven and it's mm -hmm. kind of like, psychedelic is the only way mm -hmm. I can describe it. Yes. That's what I remember. And there was kind of like rainbowish colors. Um, now, as far as like the presence of love, that wasn't even what I was searching. It, that place is where I belonged. Okay. And there, so it, I'm sorry, it looked like a planet. It looked like a planet, a very beautiful planet. There was green grass. There was like a wall structure around it. I, if I was a better drawer, I'd draw you a picture. Um, there was a, there was a man there, a man that was wearing like this brown kind of, um, I don't know if you call it like an old potato sack looking material. It was like a toga. Um, and kind of reminded me like the Roman outfits, right? And he had a purple sash and it had some gold emblems on him. Now, what trips me out about that is I remember that meaning something significant in the Bible, like priests even wear something like that. No, it's I don't. kind of a heavenly royalty. Does it? Okay, thank yes. you. I've been trying to search that for, for weeks now. Okay. Yeah, it means that the, uh, they it goes back to the medieval times of, you know, when the Kings were ordained by God, they really? wore a purple sash, you know, because really? supposedly Jesus, you know, wore purple. Okay. So, um, yeah. And in this moment of time where, you know, I didn't want to live. That's not, that's not what I was thinking about. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to say that I wasn't like manifesting. All right, now I'm going to go there and I hope that I see this outfit there. No. Um, so, this man, he had like a shaved head. I swear to God, he had glasses on too, right? And he had a clipboard. And I do believe now in soul contracts. I, I've heard this term now, and I believe that I'm on here on a contract. And I was more fixated on the fact, because I said this to him, this man, I said, don't say it, don't say it. He says, Lindsay, you got to go back. And like quicker than a millisecond, I'm 
boom, back in my body. I am on the floor. There is vomit everywhere on the floor. And I was petrified. And um, when I nicely, you know, here recently have come across um, a spiritual community and I've never been a part of one in my life. But um, after that experience, I really was like, why was I sent back here? Because other people in their near death, they get a choice to stay there. And other people have a hard time with, why does she want to commit suicide? And she was spiritually awake. Well, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I guess it's in my contract. I don't know. I, I don't know. This place has a lot of emotions to it. Okay. <laughs> right. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm the only human being that's ever wanted to, to do that. I don't think I am. Okay. Um, well, true story. My little sister, it's Kimbra. Uh, when she was born, my mother, uh, the, the uh, day she was born, they put her back into, uh, into her room, you know, and she had this experience where uh, she was, uh, saw the beam of light and a hand reaching out to her saying, Dixie, it's time. That's my mother's name. Yeah. And all of a sudden she's like, no, it's not time. I've got children <laughs> to take care of. I've got to do this. And the hand withdrew. She woke up. And uh, the doctor says, well, how are you doing this morning? And the, uh, she looked at the doctor and says, I told you I was not ready to go. No, actually, she woke up in a pool of blood. The doctor said, we thought we lost you. And she told him, damn it, I told you I'm not ready to go yet. And the doctor was just baffled. You know, and I, 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 be I believe, and I'm going to use a strong-willed person. I believe I have a very strong will. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, and there were brief moments in my time previous to all these where I've seen spirits and I've had contact with my grandmother after she passed away. All of her siblings did. She was the type of spirit that would let you know. I promise you that I'm half Spanish. OK, so that just explains that part. My grandma was the type of woman to when she would when she passed, would let everybody know that she is OK. And every one of her um, siblings and my uncles and aunts experienced something and knew she had passed. She mm -hmm. passed, passed from mm -hmm. cancer. And the day before her funeral, you know, um, cause we were out on the farm. Um, I was in this paralysis type state and I get in that a lot. And I believe that's kind of like a realm of this in between. And, um, I don't mm -hmm. know much more about that, but, um, I heard her as clear as day say, I love you, Lindsay. It was her voice. And I heard her get on the bed where my mother was at, right? Mm -hmm. And the next morning I told my mother, I said, mom, I said, I, I said, I think, I know it sounds weird, but I heard grandma say, I love you, Lindsay, and get on your bed. And she about dropped her coffee cup. She goes, she was there with me. Mm -hmm. I felt her. Now that's not coincidental. And then the other ones before my grandma had even passed, experienced something a, a ball of green light um, that went into a field one felt the tap on her sh shoulder as she was um back in vegas and say door you know her name is doris um and she goes mom passed like they all experienced mm -hmm. something right and like i said my grandma was that type to let you know don't worry about me i'm good mm -hmm. yeah i was very close to my grandmother and she also passed away from cancer um it was my senior year during finals, so I couldn't be there to go to her, her funeral. But a month later, I had a dream, and we were sitting in a truck right outside a field. And I don't remember what we talked about. The only thing I remember is she said, I have to go, but remember I love you, and no matter what anybody says, I'm proud of you. She got out of the truck and walked through a barbed wire fence and just vanished. And to this day, I believe, I even get chills thinking about it, but I believe that was her way of coming to say goodbye to me. Yeah, you gave me chills. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, and like normally I I wasn't this type of person who believed. I mean, I just was only raised to believe in the Bible and God, and that's how it worked. Okay. The experiences I had have led me to um have some more belief systems, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, meaning balance. I, I do believe in the chakras and I I believe that for most of the, our lives, we look for validation of love from others when it's actually us that needs to love ourselves. Mm -hmm. The whole thing that your parents usually preach to you, if you had you know decent parents that you thought was lame, 
is the yeah. truth. Right. You have to love you. It is all about finding you. And for most of our lives, we wear so many different masks for a while, trying to be what everybody wants us to be. And finally, when we dig deep enough, we find out who we truly are, mm -hmm. you know? And that is what, for the last, um, what's so it, 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, six years, <laughs> I have been doing, I've been healing, I've been going all the way back to childhood to figure out why do I do these things or why have I done these things? You have to take this tangled web of knots and somehow untangle them. Right. You know, okay. um, look, people at, look at the word of... not, <laughs> it does not, you know, when you untangle the knots, you think of rope. You could also think of the fact of, okay, not that is the opposite of do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Yes. untangle the knots to do that yes. that makes sense yes i mean for a, for a long time i just i can't explain it i i lived in such depression self i i didn't have any self-worth um or happiness and after the head injury um that started the process of of rapid healing for me mm -hmm. and i never thought that was possible right and like I said, even with an, a very, very supernatural, powerful experience, I thought that everything was going to be peachy king in my life. Right. And then you get thrown another valuable lesson. And I know the lesson now. And that the, what you're supposed to, well, at least what I know I'm supposed to do is when you get that lesson, you learn from it. You learn from it and, and use it as knowledge and wisdom and go forward. Because like I said, you will repeat History, you will repeat that. And it might be a harder lesson the next mm -hmm. time you learn it. One thing that was interesting. Um, so my birthday was September 28th, right? Mm -hmm. So in the middle of the night, like it hitting my birthday, right? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm asleep, obviously. And I tell you, I get in that weird paralysis state. And, and some people say that's when the soul leaves to go do its work or whatever. I don't, I don't know. But I had this bizarre dream, right? And there was some dude that I don't know from anywhere in my dream, right? He wasn't my dream man, but he is a dream man, you know? And he said, you are a psychic medium. You need to get used to these gifts. You need to learn them, which is weird because I don't have too many vivid dreams anymore unless I need to. And, but dreams are a very big thing to me sometimes. So, and that was on my birthday, you know, and really... I was 33, which is some significance of a number two in these, it's even in the Bible too. I think 33 is some number, but that's when I started my awakening, you know, sounds kind of like so faddish these days, my spirit's awakening and, you know, but, but it, <laughs> sorry, because I, as I try to get answers, I also listen and see that people still use the ego to try to twist things about these things they they right. oh spirits talking to me and it's just to get some more subscribers you know and it's just not true and i don't mm -hmm. care for that but that's right. the world you know and that's and, true and and people even in the spiritual world would be like no it's manifestations the correct way and if you don't believe that then screw you you know and it's just like oh my god whatever your experience was was your own personal experience no matter what it was as long as it made you better and healed, helped you heal and, and, you know, be a better person than you were before. That's all that matters to the moral of the story. It doesn't matter right. if it's your way or this way, don't discredit it. And so I just see so many people that kind of are like, Oh, we're spiritual, but we're a spiritual click. And it's like, Oh, spiritual. Click. And I'm only saying this because like, I, I am not used to this pod. I, like I said, I've just done one. I, I tried another one with this lady who says she channels a extraterrestrial group or whatever and does these meditations and stuff. And um, she said that my story wasn't enlightening enough. And really? a long time ago, that would have deterred me off of doing anything. I would just shut down. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes criticism or judgment or, you know, you feel like you're doing right. something that's purposeful, like 
you know, helping somebody out there who's like, I've had these experiences, but nobody believes me because yada, yada, this label I have on me. Mm -hmm. Um, And that, that hurt, but that showed me like, dang, like, because I used the word trauma or the use the word addiction, that that's, that can't be a part of somebody's spiritual path. Like that helped me Mm -hmm. grow tremendously. And as much as the struggles and uh, some of the dark things that we don't like in life that have happened, I wanted to change the damn thing because I love who I'm becoming. Exactly. And like, and like I say, I, I I don't have anybody. I don't have anybody. Well, I don't except my dog right now and my kid. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't realize people are faking near death experiences. I didn't oh I, like people are making no. these things up um, to gain whatever they're trying to gain. I'm like. It baffles me sometimes, but that's the world of technology, I guess. I don't know. Um, yes, my, my greatest gift is my sarcasm. <laughs> I mean, the, the woo-woo type of thing. I'm like, okay, yeah, right, uh-huh. Mm. And tell me about that uh, visit from Zeta Reticuli. Uh, was it uh, up, <laughs> up Uranus or, you know? I'm sorry. So I, did, I did come across, you know, because this ever since these experiences, like every day I remember them as clear as day. And, and I'm like, give me more of that, please give me more. Like, and I've, I've, um, came across a, um, a, you know, a real, a, a real psychic medium, um, who has it for profession, I guess, um, met her oddly. I just go into one of these kind of, I guess I I'd call it like a spiritual fair where people have their little rocks they're selling or their tarot mm-hmm. or readings or whatever. Um, Cause I enjoy that stuff, you know, I'm into it. And um, so I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Who recommends this? Because I'm skeptical on some psychics because if you're a good person reader or you, when you get with a psychic and you divulge too much information, it's really easy to pick up on these things, you know? Right. So um, this lady. Body language type situations. Yes. 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 So this lady, and I, and I love her to death and, um, her name is Christy Peterson. Um, she actually has ET, a a really invasive experience with ETs, you know, I guess, but, um, first I had my friend go up to her, right. Cause I was just, you know, I, I do these things to make sure they're not repetitive. Like, so she says one thing to this dude and then says the same to me, then come on, you know, Mm -hmm. And so he went to her first and then I went and she said, um, she said, I don't, she goes, I don't want you to put any judgment on me. She goes, do you believe in extraterrestrials? And I said, oh yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. She goes, they're your guides. And I said, I could have told you that because of what experiences that I had. But like I said, I didn't even have Facebook. I didn't have any social media. It's not like, and and then plus she was at a little booth, Mm -hmm. you know, she goes, I don't give my books out because she had wrote like a little book. She goes, I I want you to read this. It was about her ET experiences and stuff like that. And really her experiences and timelines and age timelines were the same as mine, you know? And she says, you're a psychic medium. And this was months ago, you know? And then it was so weird on my birthday. I have this weird dream. And like the guy's like yelling at me, like not really as mean as I'm making it sound, but like, you need to learn your gifts, Lindsay, you are a psych. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do with this. I just feel like that I can read people really well. And like, I know what, I mean, to me, maybe it's just something natural. Right. I, I can't do it for, 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 for like a profession. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just really good at seeing inside people. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe everybody can do it. I don't know, but, um, you know, and like I say, I've heard people say, I've heard people actually say, everybody could do it. Okay. uh, Yeah. For only 99, 99. I'll show you how. Right. I'll give you a little bit of information. (laughs) Like, right. Yes. It's like, okay. Yes. Right. Uh Uh-huh. And by the way, uh, you know, I I do, I do kind of, since the fact that you're trying to make money well yes yep. i am trying to make only because i care about you so like i said well, 
And plus, if you give a generic reading, like, and I always remember Pee Wee Herman, because I don't know why he went to a psych. Do you remember Pee Wee Herman? He had the Oh, movie. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when he went to the psychic? He went to the yes. psychic and she's, she, she's got his ID and she's like, you've lost something. He's like, you're right. It's my bike. And like, so I remember oh, all yes. of There is a basement in the Alamo. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I've been to the Alamo. We I are from San Antonio. My father. <laughs> yes. My, my, new, my father is a, a software engineer. So we were at the Alamo and he's like, ask him where the basement is. I was like, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> When are we going to see the base? There's no basement in the Alamo. <laughs> there is. They've got um, <laughs> offices down there, and that's like where they receive like packaging and stuff. So but... it's more of a cellar than it is a basement. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, 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 the whole Pee Wee Herman thing threw me off with psychics mm -hmm. there for a while. No, you've yeah. lost something. We've all lost something. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> hurt you. Somebody's hurt every one of us. You know. Yes. My um, favorite Paul Rubens character is the vampire in Buffy the Vampire. Oh my oh gosh, my yes. <laughs> he totally took a turn there. I was like, yes, he did. Ruben. And then he was in Blow. He was in the movie. Oh, Blow. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As the, oh, yeah. yeah, weirdo. Purple. Yeah. <laughs> right. To me, the word vulnerable, people use it as a strength word. I still see it as a weakness word. I'm learning that. I'm trying to work with that. But um, I have met tremendous people in you know the addiction world people with mental illness um i believe people with schizophrenia actually have gifts so the world just doesn't understand it they label them with schizophrenia okay i agree That's, with you there yes that is that is my belief um i have came across a guy um who they picked up off i was in a psych hospital one time like a you know i it's like that as a child always seeking attention for doing something but there was a guy they brought in came in with no shoes was in a robe his head was abnormally kind of big right and they didn't know who he was or anything I'm sorry this was I was detoxing yeah it sounds great but whatever um <laughs> and um this guy they said he had schizophrenia now all of a sudden he would say these weird words about some weird some girl like where's Karen I miss Karen and then all of a sudden he told me what was the universe and he was talking in a language that was so far more advanced than I'd ever heard in my life and explaining the universe and saying and the tunnels come from you and the tunnels come from you and I'm like this guy is not schizophrenic he's a freaking like alien like mm -hmm. he is on a different level but I believe they'll just we don't know what's wrong with him schizophrenia let's mm -hmm. write him off of that you know right um I know that the world is full of people, some struggling in their current addiction, some not. Um, a lot of those people that they have deemed crazy or criminals or whatever, I'll tell you what, those people are very, very keen on the spirituality mm -hmm. and very up to date on that stuff. It's just the world likes to trash them. Mm -hmm. I feel like they do that for a reason. I really do. I really feel like, the people with the most knowledge, they want to discard and discredit them the best they can. I do. And um, it, it's hard. It's hard. Like I'm well aware of the journey I've had and the labels and all of that. And um, we all know that even some Native Americans and some people do um, some substances that enhance those abilities in people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I get, I guess, a little angered when people are like, oh, she was just high on drugs. Okay, would you tell that to the Native Americans? And I bet right. you wouldn't, would you? Yes, yeah. you wouldn't, right? Because exactly. it's different somehow because they're allowed to do it. But, you know. Right. Um, and I think society, because society is so uncomfortable with what they don't understand, I and know. if they don't understand something, they'd rather, like you said, discredit it or make it out mm -hmm. like it's evil or it's wrong or they're crazy just so they don't have to deal with it. So society yeah. can ignore it. Yep. I listen and to. Uh -huh. I was just going to say, uh, we are getting uh, pretty long and it's winded <gasps> here. Uh, okay. <laughs> we can go ahead and I would love to have you back anytime. Oh, yes. Aww. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> 
I mean, we can uh, talk for hours on this subject. I know. This yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for all this technical no, difficulties no problem. tonight. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, it has been. It, you know, it's, uh, I was telling Kim, it's, you know, uh, the truth is always hard to get through. So, you know, technical difficulties, we kept getting you back. So that means that, you know, something yes. must want, wanted it to happen. Yeah. Despite the yes. difficulties. Okay. And, well, uh, I am um, just one quick word. I just want anybody to know if they've experienced anything and, and people thought they were discredited them because they were under the influence or whatever just don't don't listen to them like if it makes you better believe it don't listen to what people say yes no oh, matter what label they put on you yes um in fact uh i hope you're okay with me sharing this richard but um he recently had a test done and i asked him i was like did you tell the doctor that you could see dead people and talk to dead people and he's like, yes, I did. I was like, okay, I just don't want them to label you as schizophrenic because I know you're not. He's like, no, they did it. So. I hate um, the world of labels. Yay. Yes. So, all right. Well, it was awesome talking to you. Yes, definitely. Nice, nice to meet yes. you too, Miss Joel. Nice to meet yes. you. Yes. Where can people find you in case they want more information about your story and your experiences? Oh, my God. I um. I have just a Facebook. I, I like. I have a Facebook and I have an email. You have my email. Yes. Um, I am not in the big world of social media. You know, like act now for twenty nine ninety nine. You can get on my right. website. I don't have any of that. So, um, no if you want to link We're my, just huh? Starting out ourselves. So yeah. If uh, I say we're just starting out for ourselves. Oh, good. I don't even know how to link my email. I don't do. You, are you able to? Yes, definitely. I can. I can link your email and your Facebook. And people are welcome to email me as long, you know, and I do. I've gotten some great emails of people saying just really nice things, you know. Awesome. So, um, but that's all I got and a phone number. So that's it. <laughs> No we don't give out phone numbers here. No, 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 and I, I don't because then I get people are like, are you single? And it's like, for real, dude? Didn't you hear about my bad experience? Yeah. I've been married three times. Don't want to get with this right now. <laughs> yes. no, I, can, right. I can definitely link your email and your um... Facebook. That's all yes. I got. <laughs> your Facebook oh, page. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Yes. All right. <laughs> so as we uh, head off into the uh, the great wondrous evening, we'd like to remind you that uh, we are on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google, and we do ask please to give us a, at least a uh, five star rating. Any type of rating is really nice. If you say we suck, we suck. Thank <laughs> you for giving us that uh, that uh, comment because we respect that. Yes, there's always <laughs> and, room for uh, improvement. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, I'd like to say good night. Thank you again, Miss Jewel, for being here. And uh, Kim, you have any last words to say? Um, just if anybody has any questions or would like to be on our podcast, you can definitely email us at info at skepticpsychic.com. Um, and as Richard was saying, if you do rate us, please leave a, leave a review also. We do read the reviews online. I'm sorry, on air. And... <laughs> <laughs> and um i lost my shade of thought kemper won't tell uh kemper will not tell me who who rated uh, who gave us the uh review but we did get one that says you suck so it didn't i'll take say that we, as a learning experience it didn't say we suck it just said this what did it say this seems crap that's what it said oh okay <laughs> For the person so, who feels like crap about themselves. So whatever. I guess. Right. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, again, we thank you for being here. We still, we'd love to have you back and everybody enjoy your evening and sweet I dreams. know some interesting people, so. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> All, right, All right, you guys. So, okay. Unpleasant nightmares, everybody. Good night. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.